Good morning. My name is uh, William Edmiston, and I've been an OpenStreetMap contributor for almost two years. Uh, professionally, I'm a software engineer, but uh, in my spare time, I like to work on open source projects and write about them on my blog. Uh, a lot of these projects involve OpenStreetMap, and today I'm going to be talking about one that I've worked on recently called Mapping Hospital Accessibility with OpenStreetMap. Uh, so this project had two main parts, uh, analyzing hospital accessibility with OpenStreetMap data and visualizing the results with an interactive map. Uh, so in this talk, I hope to answer the following questions. Why or what is hospital accessibility? Why is it important? How do you measure hospital accessibility with OpenStreetMap? Also, I'm just realizing my slides are cut off. <laughs> Uh, but you get the point. Uh, also, uh, how does hospital accessibility compare by state? And how can we visualize these results with an interactive map? So uh, to start with, what is hospital accessibility? Uh, it's important to note that there are many components of hospital accessibility, but for this project, I'm focusing specifically on geographic hospital accessibility. Uh, and for the purpose of this project, I'm using driving time to the nearest hospital as a proxy for geographic hospital accessibility. So why is measuring hospital accessibility important? While rural Americans face some unique challenges with hospital accessibility. Uh, according to the American Hospital Association, there were 136 rural hospital closures between 2010 and 2021. Uh, another study showed that 66% of designated health professional shortage areas were rural. And a 2007 study showed that the distance to the hospital during an emergency, a 10 kilometer increase in distance resulted in a 1% increase in mortality. So how can we measure hospital accessibility using OpenStreetMap? The first step is to find all the hospitals in our area. To do so, we can look at the tag amenity equals hospital. In order to query, prepare the data for querying, I downloaded an extract from GeoFabrik and then imported it into PostGIS using the OSM2 PG SQL utility. Uh, and then these two SQL queries were used to find all hospitals with the amenity equals hospital tag. Uh, the first one is for centroids, so if it's a node, and the second one is for ways, if it's a polygon, um, that calculates the centroid of the polygon. Uh, and then once we have all the hospitals, how can we find the driving times to these hospitals? For this, I used a tool called an isochron map. These maps are used to show the travel times between one place and many other places. Uh, this figure shows a isochron map of Melbourne, Australia by train uh, from 1910. So they go back a ways. Uh, there are many open street map tools that can be used to find uh, isochrome maps. In this case, I used Valhalla, uh, which is an open source one. So the general approach here was uh, iterate over every hospital found and then calculate the isochrome polygons in 10 minute intervals between 10 and 20 minutes. Uh, so this figure shows uh, the result of doing that for two hospitals in Virginia. Uh, with this color scheme, the area less than 10 minutes away from a hospital is shown in green, 10 to 20 minutes is shown in teal, uh, 20 to 30 minutes is purple, 30 to 40 minutes is pink, and more than 40 minutes away is shown in white. And since these two hospitals are just over 20 minutes away, the uh, 10 minute regions just barely connect while all of the other regions connect uh, more thoroughly. Then this is the same figure showing uh, all the hospitals in Virginia. Uh, one thing to notice here is that uh, the areas in green are mostly around cities, and the areas in white are rural, 
less populated areas. And if we compare this to a population density map of Virginia, we can uh, confirm that. So uh, there's kind of a running joke. Uh, a lot of maps just look like population density maps. And I think this might be one of them. Uh, so for this project, I realized that it was important to account for population density if I wanted to get a more accurate picture. Uh, to do this, I use the EU's Global Human Population Dataset. And this is a data set that provides uh, estimates of population across the entire world at a uh, 100 meter resolution. Then I could use the uh, Python library raster sets to estimate the total population within an arbitrary polygon. Uh, in this case, each isochrone contour. And this is what the data looks like as a heat map. It's uh, a little hard to see here, so I apologize for that. But um, basically, there are hotspots for cities. I think that might be New York at the top. Yeah, could be. <laughs> uh, so accounting for population density, um, the metrics look a little bit more optimistic. We can see that uh, almost 66%, or rather 65% of the Virginia population is within 10 minutes of a hospital, and around 99% is within 40 minutes of one. Uh, I then expanded this approach to all of North America, just using the North America Geofabric extract. And then, yeah, it's kind of hard to see at the zoom level, which is uh, why it's important to have an interactive visualization where you can actually zoom and pan around the map. Uh, the next step was um, breaking down hospital accessibility across all states and Washington, DC. Uh, here, these, um, the color scheme is the same here, but a little tweaked. So the uh, state with the lowest population percentage within 10 minutes of a hospital is Vermont. Uh, the highest is Washington, DC, even though it's not state technically. Um, one surprising fact here was that Nevada is so high on this list and Vermont is so low, despite the fact that uh, Nevada has less than half the population density of Vermont. To kind of sanity check myself here, I was taking a look at the population density map of both states. So we can see here that Nevada has a very large swath of completely unpopulated land, uh, whereas Vermont has more sprawl. So despite the fact that uh, Nevada has an average population density that's lower, it's still more populated, uh, more concentrated within cities. And then this is the same chart sorted by 20 minutes. That's kind of why the uh, field color is an even line while the others are staggered. Uh, so there's some shakeup in the ordering of states, but uh, no major changes. So I faced a few challenges with this first approach. Uh, the first of which was that my data set included psychiatric hospitals. These facilities often don't provide general healthcare services and may not be uh, available to the general public. So to exclude these, I just used the healthcare speciality equals psychiatry tag and filtered those out of my queries. Uh, here's a bit of trivia, although I expect Many of you will know this one. What's the easternmost state in the United States? And if you're thinking it's Maine, you were wrong, I'm afraid. It's actually Alaska. And the reason for this is because the Aleutian Islands cross the 180th meridian, making them technically further east than the rest of Alaska. Uh, this is a fun fact, unless you're a programmer, in which case it probably horrifies you. Uh, it also breaks some geospatial libraries. When I went to Wikipedia to find a diagram of Alaska, 
uh, to show you all, I found that Wikipedia's diagram of Alaska was also broken here. So I had to draw in the actual borders myself <laughs> in yellow. Uh, to mitigate this, I just excluded that part of Alaska for my analysis. It's relatively unpopulated. <laughs> There are also some limitations here that I did not address. Um, the accuracy of the OpenStreetMap data is kind of unknown to me. Uh, when I was looking through it to kind of do some sanity checks, I found some clinics that were tagged as hospitals. Uh, there were some veterinarian offices that were tagged as hospitals. Um, another limitation is that this doesn't reflect specific services offered, so like trauma centers or specialty medicine that might be required in an emergency. Uh, and lastly, this doesn't consider traffic, uh, which I think would affect urban areas more than rural areas, so it might uh, even out some of these statistics. Uh, in future work, uh, I might explore different data sets for hospitals. The Department of Homeland Security has an HIFLD hospital data set that could be used here. Um, there's also Dolt Hub's uh, Medicare pricing data set, which provides the services offered by each hospital. Uh, the second part of this project was visualizing the results. So to do so, I used a number of great open source tools within the OpenStreetMap ecosystem. Uh, this allowed me to post the visualization at minimal cost, which was very important to me because this is just a hobby project and it's not monetized in any way. Uh, this interactive visualization had two main layers. There is a grayscale base layer uh, showing major features like cities, roads, borders, things like that. And then there's the main visualization layer showing the isochrome polygons in the same color scheme we saw before. Uh, and that's based on the Veritas color scheme. Here is a video of this, if it will play. And this just shows me zooming and panning around the map. Uh, it's probably pretty familiar if you've uh, interacted with like Google Maps or OpenStreetMap. So uh, some of these tools that I used were like MapLuber GL to provide the slippy map. Uh, it's an open source fork of Mapbox GL, and it allowed me to customize the styling exactly how I wanted. So these uh, these colors could be picked manually by myself. A proto maps was used to combine the vector tile data into a single file, and that helped me reduce posting costs as well. Uh, uses HTTP range requests to fetch the relevant subset of data, uh, similar to how video seeking works over HTTP. Uh, some other tools use uh, Planet Tiler for generating the base map, Tippecanoe for converting the isochrone GeoJSON into uh, vector tiles. Then for hosting the data, uh, the Virginia map visualization alone came to just uh, 11 megabytes, or sorry, 12 megabytes total, uh, which allowed me to just fit it inside a Git repo, and then I could use GitHub pages to host the project entirely for free. Uh, the North America data came in at just under a gigabyte, which was too large for a Git repo, but uh, I just used Cloud Cloudflare R2 for hosting this data, uh, also allowing me to reduce costs. Uh, my biggest takeaway here was the impact that these open source tools will have on creating interactive map visualizations. Uh, they can reduce the costs uh, by orders of magnitude compared to using third party services like Google Maps. And these tools are already starting to be adopted by uh, large media companies like New York Times or the Washington Post. Uh, but I think they're just as relevant for independent data scientists and journalists. Thank you. Any questions?